else. Back, uh, okay. And uh, I ended up becoming a, now a, um, a, a Holy Fire Reiki uh, master and um, reflexology and uh, a life coach. So he's kind of my, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm working on, on him over uh, as well and also uh, helping him to well which helps him to heal himself and I'm also every time I, I put him to bed I have to put him to bed and get him up and do everything for him and um, I'm sort of telling him then to uh, how to talk to himself before he goes to sleep and you know um, I'm well and healthy and I'm that sort of thing and, and my brain is whole and things like this or I'm saying your brain uh, you know you are well and healthy and that sort of thing so yes and I think he's a I think he's over the last few months I think he's become better so which people would say uh, well that can't happen with Alzheimer's and all this but um, uh, I feel he has become better and um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm you know I, I, I sort of um, I think that pyramid <laughs> will be another tool to help, hopefully. So we'll see how that works uh, with it. So okay. that's how I got into that. Perfect. Kate, you want to go next? <laughs> sure. I'm Kate Dotson. I'm, I live around Houston, Texas, and I'm a functional nutritionist. So I work with clients to get their nutrition in order, and it also includes lifestyle changes. And sometimes I hit a point where I can't seem to help them any further. So I've been exploring additional modalities. And um, a while back, I got a Tesla biohealing device, one of the small <laughs> ones, the little personal ones. And then I stumbled across Charlie on JCK and started looking into the Russian pyramid. So I want to see about helping with the research and utilizing that with my clients and my family and, and this pesky frozen shoulder. Thank you. <laughs> Paul, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, so my background's in psychology um, and I've, I've done, NLP training, hypnosis training, and, and lots of different modalities like that, timeline therapy. So I use those, um, I get really good results with those things, but then it's not really exactly what I'm passionate about. It's, it's using energy and um, just being very intuitive with my clients. Um, very often, if I'm using energy, I'm just, I just get exactly what I need for the client. And then I can weave in the psychology stuff as well. So working with the, when I found the pyramids, um, for some reason, it just activated something in me, some deep, strong passion. Um, and I was meditating in, in the pyramid uh, a few weeks ago. And I looked on my wall and I saw, I don't know if you can see this picture very well. It's a picture oh my, of me yes. meditating in a pyramid. I drew that two years ago oh. um, and all this stuff has just started activating like past life stuff and other drawings that I've done. And, um, as I've been working in the pyramid, I do about an hour of meditation every day in the pyramid and things are manifesting quicker. Um, my energy's that much higher and I've just got so much drive for it and, and enthusiasm. It's, uh, yeah, it really activated me. So, so I'm, I'm much more excited about my work now as well. And I'm talking. Yes. Okay. Yeah, animal, animal issues. Yeah. So that's that's kind of kind of what's going on right now. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, Dina, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, so I'm Dina and I live in Southwest Colorado. 
uh, for the past over 30 years. I've uh, been a massage therapist and an energy healing practitioner um, and a past life regressionist. And uh, when I first saw the David Wilcock uh, Russian Pyramid series some years ago, I, I thought to myself how cool it would be to have the that type of pyramid to work, yeah. you know, to actually yeah. utilize. But I didn't pursue it. I, I didn't, you know, research it like you did, Charles. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when I when I uh, heard the JCK interview, um, I was very excited. I have not gotten the pyramid yet. I, I'll either be buying one or making one. Yeah, I'm sure. still getting there. Um, but I'm really looking forward to using it in my daily life and also with clients. Cool. Mm -hmm. And with my animals too, I'd love. I want to get you know have a small one for the, for my three cats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Well, I figure you you know you guys know me and and Lisa if you've watched the JC thing, but you, you probably don't know Allie. So Allie, why don't you introduce yourself a little? Okay, I'm Allie Wasco. I am um, living in North Carolina in the Triangle region, <laughs> which is. Um, ironic with pyramids and the uh, shape of a triangle. I am coordinating the survey part of the study. So I'm the face behind the email. As you get results, you can report them to me. If you have questions, I say I may not know the answer, but I know people who do. <laughs> so it can get mm -hmm. the answer to you. Um, I'm a Reiki master teacher. Um, also, Holy Fire, I've been um, attuned to Holy Fire for about a year, Anne-Marie, and it's just a marvelous, marvelous modality, and I love working with it, but I'm new to pyramids, so, um, but I've had, like, probably eight days, ten days in, maybe, with it. Um, amazing. It uh, amplifies the energy. Um, it, it alone felt to me like a very powerful Reiki session from a very experienced teacher. So um, I'm just excited to see what it does going forward. Cool. And excited to work on the research too. Fantastic. I, I have to yeah. tell a story because I don't think I've told you this. I, I, I did the first two components of or se sections of Reiki and never did the third one. And that mm -hmm. was probably 20 years ago and, and it was because my left brain at the time couldn't grasp the idea that a form could create energy fields. Energy, yeah, right. And here I am preaching the gospel now. <laughs> you came ago. around. So, the seed was planted. That's right. That's he right. So, you know, <laughs> I have Ibrahim Kareem in my book draft, if you guys know who he is. But uh, he he's created something called biogeometry, and he... He basically, you know, it's the science of his, he, it's a, his study of, of how form, you know, creates uh, impressions and, and impacts the energy field. So it's, it's ironic, I think, that, you know. But that's, that, Charlie, is why what we're doing at the Pyramid Science Foundation is so important, because most people in the world right now think the same way, that how can a simple shape heal them. It makes them feel stupid for living in sickness for so long when something so simple could heal them. And the Pyramid Science Foundation and you guys helping us, you're going to show them that this is why, this is what it's doing. You know, this is the before, this is the after, this is the proof that you need for your left brain to now open up your right brain and believe us, <laughs> you know. So we are going to go through the left brain with the science and get to the right brain so they can join us. That's that's exactly right, and uh, you know, I, I certainly have had a long journey to get here, but now now that I get it, and I got it with my left brain, I'm 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 out here preaching. So uh, anyway, so I guess uh, we can get started. I I put together a slide presentation that we'll go through, just to kind of introduce you to what we're trying to do and accomplish, and um, some of the ideas that we have um, going forward. So. Uh, I'll just go ahead and open it up and we'll get started. Uh, but anyway, we, you know, first and foremost, you know, I want to thank everybody for, for coming here uh, this evening. We are, 
Lisa and I have been, you know, working on uh, the foundation for several years now. We got it up and running last year. And, you know, our mission is to uh, do research on into the health benefits, uh, agriculture, uh, material science, and, uh, uh, you know, ecological uh, ramifications. But most importantly for us right now is health. And it's, it's challenging, or it's been challenging to date. We've hired a, a group to go out and try to find us um, uh, some grant funding to, uh, to pursue, perhaps replicate and expand upon the, the research that was done in Russia in the areas of health, but it's been a challenge so far. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that most of these grant funding uh, uh, organizations are, are pretty mainstream and we haven't really been able to, to get any, uh, any funding yet, but we're hoping to, you know, we're not gonna let that stop us. And that's why we're asking people like yourselves who are interested in uh, looking in and pursuing uh, alternatives uh, or even enhancements to your existing uh, methodologies of, of, of energy healing to, to add the pyramid to it. But anyway, we're going to try to um, get people such as yourself involved in, in doing research. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that when we start to produce some of these results that it may help to, to get more, you know, traditional uh, funding sources to, um, you know, that come to our assistance and give us some more money. But no matter, I'm, I do have a meeting scheduled on July the 7th with the group that we have hired to, to do grant writing proposals for us. And, you know, we'll be, I, I hope they're going to get excited about the fact that we're, we're actually going to start to to be doing research on our own. So um, that's, you know, that's essentially the, you know, the background of what we're trying to do. And, and we're hoping that you will assist us in uh, going forward. So to the extent that you all are, are interested in, and I hope you are in, in helping us to document results, uh, you know, Understandably, the, the Russian research had a lot of money, had government funding, which we will certainly, almost certainly never get here in the US, but uh, I realized that the research that we're gonna be able to do is gonna be a lot l less rigorous in its approach, but that doesn't mean that it's not important. I think it's uh, for, you know, on, on, on the one hand, I don't think that people who are totally opposed to this are going to, uh, you know, have a, have, or believe in this, no matter how comprehensive our research is, but still, it's going to be important for us to, to bring those people who, who have an open mind, the information and the results that we get. And that's certainly going to be our goal to, to do that and to, to get it out into the public. So, you know, in order to do that, you know, we're looking to, you um, uh, also, to to the extent that you all uh, are excited about adding pyramid energies into your healing practices, you know we, we'd like to promote your work, and we can do that um, in a couple of ways. First of all, to the extent that you're willing to talk about this, you know we'll be happy to do videos and papers, press releases, and so forth. You know about any results that you get, but also what we want to say is that you know, this is an idea that we've been talking about, and I think it's time to do it. Uh, we're going to put, uh, he, you know, Pyramid Healing Directory uh, together. I'm getting a new website. Mark Atwood's group is, is actually putting it together, and it's pretty close to final, but as soon as that's up, I hope to put together a, a, a page where people can actually come and look for uh, pyramid healers that they, if they're interested, and so forth. So to the extent that you're interested in and, and participating in that, that'll be free, but we'll, we'll be putting together a list of, uh, of healers and, um, you know, discuss your background and areas of interest. So, um, um, another topic that, you know, just br briefly we'll talk about to the extent that you find that you're, you're interested and get great results from this. Uh, Lisa and I are both gonna be 
setting up affiliate programs for healers to the extent that you'd like to to use pyramids or get have your cl uh, clients uh, use them you know we'll set up a coupon code for you uh, and when that it, to, for a discount for your customers and clients and then we'll you know we will set up a some sort of compensation for you for the referral of, of business if you're interested so if you're interested in pursuing that as well uh, I've I'm waiting for the new uh, website to get up and running so I can actually get this affiliate program software going. But um, anyway, please feel free to uh, contact us at survey at uh, Pyramid Science Foundation if you have an interest in participating as an affiliate going forward. Uh, in terms of what we're trying to do, we, we're just at the, as we said at the very beginning, so we're obviously interested in, in health issues as a, as a primary you know, source of, of, of research. But with that said, it's hard to not uh, you know, delve into psi-related areas of all sorts, whether it's you know, clairvoyance, clairaudience, mediumship, remote healing, remote viewing, meditation. These are all, I mean, all of this is just a, you know, an extension of, of the health benefits that come from, from understanding and, and, and optimizing the field around us for health purposes. So if you're interested in those areas, you know, please uh, feel free to, to do any sort of research that you'd like to uh, in that area, because we, uh, we're certain people ask us questions about that all the time. I've got a person in California, I, I'm, um, who is interested in, for example, trying to get a group of, buy 15 pyramids for his meditation group. Well, if we're gonna have an audience like that, I'd love to figure out some before and after, uh, excuse me, uh, protocols that we might use from aura analysis to brainwave uh, analysis and so forth to see what effects those have. So these are all just ideas to think about as, uh, as you proceed. Um, other areas of interest uh, away from, from you know, health, uh, proper addiction recovery, uh, also EMF and autoimmune disorders, that, those two I think are, are in, I know they're intimately linked, um, as is autistic spectrum, spectrum disorders, PTSD, other types of, of issues. So if you have interest in those as well, um, and also, if you have any other areas of, of expertise or interest that you think the people, uh, as you'll see, we have a, a fairly good number of people who are interested in, in pursuing uh, with you to, uh, attempts to, to, to be healed uh, by some of these methodologies. So if you have any special area of interest, we're going to be doing a similar uh, set of, of these on July the 10th for people who are in need of, 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 of some healing. And I'd be happy to you know, mention those ideas as well or have you come on and discuss those when we uh, have those meetings on the 10th of July. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lisa next. Lisa came up with what I think is a really cool idea and uh, that's to, to do some, uh, some group uh, pyramid healing meditation. So Lisa, why don't you talk about that for a moment? Yeah, of course. Uh, so my idea is mainly, it's very simple. Uh, we'd have a group of healers all sitting inside of their meditation pyramids, all focusing their intention towards one person who needs healing. Um, and all we would be doing is holding that intention of the person already being healed in our mind. Um, it's a very simple technique. I mean, the Greg Braden talks about how the Native Americans uh, manifest rain, and it's similar to that technique, you know, uh, like energy attracts like energy. Um, when you're focusing your intention on the rain, um, what they do is step inside the medicine wheel, the Native Americans, they envision the sky turning gray, they envision the rain falling on their face, they envision their feet standing in mud, um, and the feeling is the key. The feeling is the key uh, to the manifestation and the key to the healing. Um, the person being healed will also have to let go of that I'm sick feeling as well, you know, and, and hold that, uh, grasp a hold of that feeling that they are already well. And that's going to enhance it even more. But 
we'll be doing different types of studies with it and testing, you know, maybe for 15 minutes one day. And we'll do a before and after with the, the participant. Um, maybe the next time we'll increase it to a half an hour and see how that improves it. Um, just adding different modalities, we can, you know, eventually implement maybe the caduceus coil or some pyramid enhancements and see how that affects it as well. But that's just one um, little thing that I'd like to start doing. There's way more grand ideas in my mind as well, but I don't want to overwhelm people with them right now. <laughs> so, uh, Lisa, how are you going to, how do you want to get information out on this? Because I know you, you, you want to spend a couple of weeks, you've got, you need time to kind of get settled again, but. Yeah. You, we, well, uh, in a couple weeks, I think we'll just send an email to everybody announcing uh, when these will start. Um, I'd like to do them on a weekly basis, so have a different participant or different participants. Um, we could even get several groups. It, it depends on how much interest we have in it. We could have several groups and several uh, people who need healed, you know, working at the same time. So it just, it just really depends on how it's going to take off. But the more the merrier and the more healing... Uh, we have is going to help heal the world faster. Okay, cool. So more to come here in the next couple of weeks on that topic. So yes. uh, for those of you who have not seen this, um, these videos that JC did with us, um, I would suggest that you, you go uh, at least look at the first one. It has, uh, we spent a, a great deal of time talking about some testimonials that we had received between the initial uh, uh, interview that we did with, uh, I did with Mark Atwood and the time of the interview at JC, with JCK. So there's, there, you know, if, if, if you have not seen that, that's, that's good, good information. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of that on my new website as well, those testimonials and so forth. But it gives you an idea of some of the ranges of, of um, you know, uh, healings that have occurred uh, from aches and pains to one guy had some polyps in his nose that disappeared and uh, uh, past life traumas that people have been carrying around were able to be uh, uh, dealt with successfully and so forth. So there's lots of interesting stuff there uh, just to, to, you know, give, give you some, uh, some ideas. So, you know, you might want to check that out if you haven't seen it already. So now uh, just a quick, we want to go through we, we sent out the survey. We continue to get more results. I pulled these up about three or four days ago. So there's been a lot more people who have responded since then, but uh, we're up to about 100 now. But, um, you know, we, we, as of this time, we had about 72 responses. But the first question that we asked people was, uh, you know, what was your reason to want to participate in this program? 60% of the respondents said that they were in, people in need of, of some sort of, uh, of healing improvement in their life. And the other 40%, some of you were healers that are, uh, and others were healers who also needed you know, some help with some health issues. So um, the next question we asked was, describe the primary healing modalities you incorporate. This is for the healers themselves and it's that, that slide, even though it's pretty, you couldn't read the bar graph very well. So I printed out the, the, the largest responses. The current healing modalities that people responded to that they would want to incorporate uh, pyramid uh, energies into uh, are uh, sound and frequency healing was number one, crystals, herbal remedies, uh, distance healing, supplements, Reiki, homeopathy and so forth. So this isn't a huge sample size, but uh, sound healing, which I think because of the, ge the geometry of the pyramid, uh, that's where I, I, I'm, I think we're gonna have some, some pretty amazing results. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. Um, we asked as well of the entire group, do you have any prior experience using pyramids for healing? And you can see the vast majority of people do not have experience with that, which isn't a surprise. Uh, and that's really part of the reason why we're, we're going through this process to try to bring greater awareness to the healing properties of these pyramids. Uh, what types have you used? Very small sample size, but the few people who did answer seem to have used Giza pyramids and Russian pyramids in the past for healing. 
The next question, uh, describe the healing results you achieved from the pyramid, again, small sample size, but most of the people just responded with overall better, better health. Uh, we want to start to refine that and find specific situations that we're going to be able to, to dem we hope to demonstrate, you know, whether it's a specific situation like blood pressure or diabetes or aches and pains, autoimmune diseases and so forth. So. Uh, what is the primary health issue you'd like to have addressed? And here uh, we had uh, low energy was, was uh, a response by almost 92% of the uh, people who responded to that question. Aches and pains, uh, brain fog, uh, focus issues, autoimmune disorders, EMF sensitivity, these are all very high on the list. Diabetes control, weight loss, uh, addictions. So uh, there's a whole range of, of, of desires here uh, that people you know, would like to see addressed uh, through pyramid healing. And then this one was again for the, uh, for the healers. What types of health needs are you interested in assisting with? And what I thought was interesting it almost mirrors the, uh, the uh, desires of uh, uh, the people who are in need of healing. They low energy, aches and pains, focus issues, autoimmune diseases. So it almost tracks perfectly with those uh, issues that are of interest to the people uh, uh, willing to, to act as healers. And then um, another question, what healing modalities are you considering using in conjunction with the pyramid? And um, here again, if, uh, sound healing was uh, tops on the list, 72%. So I, that seems to be, uh, you know, a, 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 a major theme. Crystals, supplements, uh, chakra healing, herbal remedies, uh, distance healing, chiropractic, and so forth going down the list. But uh, sound healing is, is definitely a, a clear number one. Uh, both healers and uh, participants seem to be willing to do uh, regular sessions uh, with uh, uh, each other. And people seem generally amenable to doing group sessions. So to the extent that you're you know, looking to, to, to try to you know, save some time, if you're going to be working with uh, some of the people who are requesting some help, uh, you, know, you could do that in a group basis. Um, and then we asked some questions about testimonials. People are happy to do anonymous testimonials. Uh, they mostly are, are willing to do, uh, give a testimonial for positive responses uh, uh, with their name. And then, you know, a fair good, fairly good number of people were also willing to do videos and so forth. So um, um, that's um, uh, kind of where that goes. Now we finally asked uh, about some sessions and, and these sessions would be sort of adjuncts, but I think a lot of um, this is going to cover a broad area of, of topics that may be of interest to people. Remediation of EMFs is, I think, one of the most important things that we can do to, um, to improve our health. Um, I, at one time, was uh, uh, started a, a, a home EMF remediation business and if no one else wants to do it, I'll be happy to do, you know, a, a, a free discussion on that. But there's some, some hugely uh, significant, there's over 7,000 articles uh, that link EMF exposure to chronic disease. So, uh, you know, this is, I think this is just a fundamental topic uh, that, that people need to address for health. Um, Sound healing, as you can tell, that's of interest to both the healers and the people uh, in the group. So I think we want to do a session uh, on sound healing. Similar with a lot of people have asked about how to use the caduceus coil. We need to give more information about that. There are other types of coils as well. So that's of interest to people as, uh, as is uh, a session on pyramid energy enhancements. I think Lisa's going to do that, uh, that particular one. And then finally, uh, people are interested in uh, enhancing their psi abilities. And psi, again, is really just anything dealing with the field, whether it's uh, in a mediumship or 
or uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and so forth, anything dealing with uh, access to the field. So those are, those, you know, those are all, that's a, essentially a summary of what we've learned so far from the, from the little survey that we've done. And we're, we're getting more information, you know, as we, as we move forward. In terms of matching healers and participants, to the extent that you'd like to help others, uh, we can pair you together with people who have requested uh, some, some assistance, and we're happy to do that. Uh, you're certainly free if you're going to be doing the research to work with other people outside of, you know, our group as well uh, as, you, um, as you begin to, to do your research. Um, we do ask that uh, you, whatever initial studies or research that you do with the people who have requested help that you, you do that for free. But once the initial results are, are over, uh, you know, you're certainly free to, to charge participants uh, if you wish to. And then I guess what finally we'd ask is that you, uh, if you will uh, email us, we'd like to get in a confirmation before we start to pair people up that people are actually, you know, sincerely interested in, in working with some people um, with uh, uh, pyramids in conjunction with your healing modality. So uh, if you would, if you're still interested in doing that, uh, send us a, a note to survey at pyramidsciencefoundation.org. And then in terms of measurement of results, this is your show. So this is not something where we're going to be, be you know, telling you how to do it. But I guess what we would request is that to the extent that you are treating something that can be measured you know, relatively easily numerically, like blood pressure, or blood sugar levels, immune function tests, anything like that, live blood analysis, brainwave tests, or aura photography, and so forth, you know, go ahead and try to use those me use objective measurement tools to the extent that they are they make sense and that they're available. If these are going to, you know, run into some money, the foundation has some funds available, and we'll be happy to, to help pay for costs. For example, you know, if I hook up with the person who wants to deal with the 15 meditators, well, you know, we're going to figure out some way to get some sort of an objective test measurement done, and that's going to cost a little bit of money, but I think it's worth it to get the results. So, you know, we're happy to, to work with you on that. But all, to the extent that you're working on, on more subjective issues, using as an example, pain management, you know, just using something like a one to 10 scale, you know, my pain was eight before and now it's a two or three or something, you know, that may be as good as we can do. Obviously testimonials are always welcome and people love to see those. So uh, any and all of those techniques are appropriate. And, if you have ideas or questions, uh, just give us a ring and we'll try to help you out. And then how to report results. I'm gonna let Allie talk about that because I don't wanna mess up uh, uh, you know, formats and things like that. But uh, Allie, why don't you talk, talk to this for a little bit? Well, it seems like we all have a different um, office uh, platform. I'm on Apple, so I use Pages, but I also use Google. Um, and I'm aware of several online um, converters. So just send me what you have. Chances are I can use it. Um, if not, I can convert it. If not, we'll be in touch. It's pretty simple. Nice and easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah if, you, yeah. if you've got a lot of numbers, put it in a spreadsheet if possible, because I think that'll make manipulation a little bit easier. But other than that, uh, um, you know, Allie will be in touch and, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll be able to work out how to, how to get that information together. And we are interested in videos and testimonials, uh, you know, or discussions because people seem to love to, to hear, you know, those personal details and, um, and, and experiences. So, you know, whatever you come up with, we are excited to get it and we'll be publishing this on the Pyramid Science Foundation website. We're going to start publishing these results as they start to come in. We love to do videos and other things that we can to get the word out on uh, on what we've done. So, um, back to the pre-webinars we were talking about. Um, you know, we've got those five 
if any of you would like to uh, be presenters and, and uh, help us out on uh, presenting some of those, uh, please contact us. Because uh, like I say, I could do EMFs, but if there's somebody who could do it, we're definitely looking for somebody to do a sound healing seminar. Um, I can, I think I have someone who could, could do coils. I can do it as well if I have to. I, and um, Lisa's going to do pyramid energy enhancements. We need somebody to talk about um, psi abilities uh, in the pyramid. So, um, but if you have other topics that you would like to uh, uh, discuss, uh, and I have one down there, for example, uh, dowsing. Um, you know, JC has shown the world, we've done this independently, but dowsing the energy fields of uh you know people inside and outside the pyramid i think that's an outstanding way uh you know to 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 quantify these results some people aren't going to consider them to be accurate but if we have enough people with consistent results i think you know it's going to help to uh you know move some of the people who are detractors of, of dousing into the pro dousing column because uh you know We've done this and it's, it's eerily uh, consistent. Um, and it, therefore my belief in dowsing has gone up seeing that we did research on using dowsing of, of my energy fields, JC did it, and they, they, they were virtually uh, spot on with each other. And I know that we've got other people who have been doing the same thing. So, you know, that's a, that's a fascinating topic. So if you have anything like that, uh, you know, let us know. And we'll start announcing the schedules of these, uh, you know, when uh, we start to, to get, you know, fill in names on who's going to do it. And, and um, also, you know, let us know if you have thoughts about uh, good times to do these sorts of things uh, going forward. In general, what, you know, kind of to close up, I mean, what we're interested in doing is, is, is really trying to get a new pyramid healing community started here. So, you know, when we get the Q and A, let's talk about that and, and see how we can stay in touch and communicate on an ongoing basis so that we can, uh, uh, you know, help each other uh, on our research. So anyway, that's pretty much it for the, you know, for the slide presentation. We would like to just get your feedback at this point and, uh, Whoops, let's see, there we go, we're back. Okay, and see if there are any questions. I have a question. Yes, Kate. Do you have any just basic material that we could use as a template to hand to our clients so they get an overview of what they are, what they mean, what they can do, what, you know, anything like that? Huh. I don't, I don't have anything like that. And that's probably a good idea. You're just saying like a, like a two page or what are pyramids and what are their benefits? Yeah. Why don't I try to. And, and what it, yeah. What's the theory, but in very understandable layman's terms. Okay. Well, I'll try to put together. How about, uh, you know, top 10 questions or something about pyramids, something like that. And I'll try. And to, then you could put that as your FAQ on your website. I could do that. You bet. I like that. Okay. I'll try to put something uh, like that together. And Lisa, hopefully you can help me out too. So, um, but that's a good of idea. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We plan to get more information out there. Charlie and I have been swamped since the JCK and Mark Atwood shows with our businesses. It's hard for us to even keep up. I'm behind. Uh, way, more, way more behind on my orders than I thought I would be. But right now I'm training a bunch of people. I just moved to a new workshop. And once things, things are starting to smooth out, we're starting to implement things a lot, production a lot faster and stuff like that. So that's going to free us up to do what our intentions were to get this information out there to people. So we'll be doing informational videos, you know, how to use the caduceus coil, how to set up your pyramid I'm just basic things like that. And uh, so that's our plan. We just have to free up a little bit of time to do it. So hopefully you guys can help us uh, mm -hmm. get that going as well with your research. Yeah, and if, Charlie, if you can put together the basics, I could format it and put it into some kind of 
okay. happy Pyramid Science Foundation well, standard template if you have one. Yeah, thank We're you. We're making it up as we go, Kate. So all right. <laughs> well, I used to be a project manager, so I'm all about. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, we need we need people from the corporate world who understand that kind of stuff and and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. All right. I'll I'll. I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll put something together. Uh, I'll try to do it tomorrow and, um, you know, get it to you early next week. Maybe get Le you and Lisa, you know, working on something there. Cool. Give you a draft. Okay. All right, cool. Any other questions? Well, maybe I can ask you guys a question. Uh, you know, I, Kate kind of told us what she does. Paul, what, what are your plans on um, kind of working with the pyramid and, and what are your expectations and hopes to accomplish? Okay. So I've got a, a workshop in July that I'm going to, I've just built eight pyramids today. Good for you. All right. Yeah. I'm pretty tired right now, but um, yeah, I built out eight pyramids today. So I've got a workshop um, booked in July. I've got um, a bunch of people that are, you know, spiritually orientated, pretty excited to do a to do a workshop, and I'm sort of trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do with them, because I've got lots of modalities that I use to to um, do healing work. So I'll probably do an intentions workshop, and really get them focusing in, honing in on certain intentions, things that they really want in their lives. We'll probably do a bit of tree hugging in between as well to ground the energies down. Um, so I'm going to play with that. Um, yeah. I've got classes starting at a Pilates studio in September. So I'm going to try and figure out how that's going to work. Um, probably doing like an hour session and see right. how that goes. See, see what people think. There seems to be a lot of excitement about it. Um, probably because I'm really excited. So it's sort of <laughs> cool. having an impact on people. Right. And I think beyond that, it's, I want to get out and do as many workshops as I can. I want to get out and do retreats and I just want to go. Yeah. Full on. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, the pyra the pyramid you made, did you do the furniture grade or the plumbing grade pipe? The, fur the furniture grade, yeah, following all your instructions. Oh, yeah. good. So, and you got them from that location there in the UK? Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it comes across from the US. It does. It's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The pipe, the fittings all come from the same yeah. place that I get my parts. So, um, yeah. forgot the name of it off the top of my head, but... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's I, I know the place you're talking about in the UK. So yeah, it's great. So yeah, it's good. So. Yeah, delivering like a couple of days. So it's great. Really cool. Yeah. Um, just a question about putting the pyramids together. Um, sometimes the it's a little tight putting the poles into some of the some of the joints. Yeah. Um, is there is there any sort of anything any solution or anything that you use to <laughs> assist that process? What we have to do, one of the things I've learned uh, from working with PVC is that uh, the extrusion process uh, of pipe and fittings is, is an art more than a science or a little bit of both. They yeah. can't seem to get, um, it's, it, it, and it's not this company, I, the whole industry. If you've, if you've ever seen how, how the pipe is extruded, you have like this, this rod in the middle that's solid, and then you have yeah. something kind of that's a little bit wider that they extrude the pipe through. And so yeah. it comes out at a certain <laughs> certain depth or, or width, and, and the external and internal diameters, uh, they try to keep them as close as possible, but they don't it, because of the speed of the extrusion, the temperatures, there's yeah. all these variables that the, the outside diameters of the pipe, the inside yeah. diameters of the fittings aren't perfect. So we yeah. have to go through and um, check every pipe before we ship them out to see if they fit right. If, right. And if yeah. not, we have to yeah. bore out usually some of the, we get a, a, a something called a Dremel. I, I assume they have something equivalent in the, you know, where you live, but um, just some kind of small device and go in and sand them out a little bit to make sure that they fit right. Another thing that we have found that works really well 
that sometimes will eliminate the need for uh, that sort of sanding is something called MAN, M-A-N-N, Ease Release. Um, it's a spray can of silicone that you, uh, yeah. That, yeah. You, that you can spray on the inside and it seems to help with the, with the fit. So some, some silicone sprays are not gonna work, uh, yeah. but this MAN Ease Release seems to work pretty yeah. well for us. We, we got, yes. I had a can of it but way back in the day. I was making custom corner uh, uh, connectors and yeah. I was making pour, making them with pore molds and so forth. So I had this in the shop and one of the people that's now working with me to make pyramids saw it and she said, well, I wonder what this would do and tried it and it worked great. So hmm. I'm gonna try some kind of silicone based spray as well. Okay, that's awesome. awesome. But yeah, that's a problem. That's problematic, and and I wish that there was a simple answer, but there's not. And if we could solve that problem, it would cut our production time quite a bit, because yeah. probably thirty to forty percent of our time, sometimes on certain, you know, um, batches of pipe and fittings, they just don't fit right. So we have to go in and do something with them. Right. Okay. So. Anyway. Cool. Can I can I ask another question? As sure. Well, please. Um, so with the uh, caduceus coils. Yeah. So obviously I've I, I'm not obviously I've I've listened to a lot of your videos. I've listened listened to the David Wilcock wisdom teachings, um, and obviously understand that the construction is PVC and the Russian ones obviously had the fiberglass as well. So no no metals. So what's the deal with putting the caduceus coil inside the pyramid? Inside the pyramid. I'm That's really a great been question. my mind. I I understand now. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can because sure. it seems contradictory. The um, the pyra the the use of of base metals in the construction of the pyramid seems to be problematic. And I mean we've tested that. Yeah. Law of One has tested it. Rush, Nikolai Kozarev, father of torsion physics, you know, confirms that. There's a lot of things, you know, and Dr. Gallad and his team, you know, confirm that as well. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the sound frequencies, the, one of the way, you know, coils are all going to have copper. I mean, the, the, it, you know, conductive wire in them. And yeah. they, however, they seem to have a dramatic impact on the energy fields that are created. So I know it sounds contradictory, but it seems like it's more important that the pyramid itself not be constructed with, with copper. Although, um, you know, obviously yeah, the coils are. We also, well, we also ran into, you know, one of the capstones I make, um, they have magnetite powder in them, which is metal. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of the most powerful capstones that I made that people would sit in it at the expo and they would really feel that energy. So it's, it's something that we have to test with the Pyramid uh, Science Foundation is just, um, is all this. The caduceus coil is new to us, so we have to do a lot of testing with that. Um, but all the different aspects, you know, it's, we just have so much research to do. That's why it's so important to have so many participants to help us. Yeah, yeah, but and is that that coil a caduceus coil? Is is that um, effect so effective? Does it matter if it's um, coiled in a certain way, certain distance, and everything, or could it just be any? Uh, uh, you just coil it. You just wind it in any any which way. <laughs> we <laughs> or you have just a straight piece of uh, copper. Okay. Lisa and I learned about the caduceus coil from uh, G. W. Hardin, H. A. R. D. I. N., and uh, he he is um, an expert in solfeggio frequencies. And but we we learned the basics on on how to make a caduceus coil from him. Uh, we took his basic model. You know he he has a he has a paper that he wrote on this. I don't know about eight years ago. And we sort of refined it and enhanced it. I'll give you as much as I know. 
uh, GW says that the number of coil loops should be in multiples of nine, and that has to do with vortex mathematics and you know base nine stuff. Uh, so his original coil model had only nine loops. I took it to 36, just figuring it would be more powerful. Um, he also, his basic example was to just use a wooden dowel instead of a piece of PVC pipe. When we sent it to him, and, and to put the quartz sand inside of it. And he, he automatically saw, he said, wow, this is so much more powerful. But um, there are some people who um, I've been in touch with that I wanna continue to do research on coils with in general. Uh, and I met them at the Philadelphia, some got people at the Philadelphia Radionic Society. Some of you may know of David Sereda I mean, he does some huge coils. They're very expensive, but uh, some of these people in Philadelphia can replicate them and so forth. So there's just a lot more research to be done in the area of coils. And, but anyway, I don't know if I answered your question, but you know, we, that's where we, we started. Uh, we developed, a, you know, I think an enhanced model of that. And we want to test it along with a lot of other coils. Um, you know, we have a mutual friend who, who makes, uh, uh, you know, coils uh, from the work of Slim Sperling, for example. You know, there's, uh, there's also uh, another guy in South Dakota, um, uh, Brian Besco with Twisted Sage who makes them and so forth. So there's, there's all these different coils, but what they're all doing is apparently they are, you know, they're all using uh, the ability of coils to produce scalar waves. And that seems to be, you know, the key here that we need to do more research on. Uh, but scalar waves have been proven to be the preferred way of communication um, with our DNA. And uh, there's also research that indicates that scalar wave will uh, bypass or and or eliminate, we're not sure exactly how it works, but any subconscious blocks the healing. So um, there seems to be some, some, some great benefit there. Charlie. Yes. Could I ask you a question on that? Like working in psychology, I come up against a lot of defense mechanisms in the psyche. Yes. Especially, especially around issues like trauma or right. something that has a lot of, like a lot of heavy emotion, um, in that experience where, you know, it's very well buried and there's right. lots of psychological defense mechanisms around that. So people that can't get close. Um, I, I'm, my mind's sort of struggling with the idea of, of bypassing something of that magnitude, having, having worked with things, um, and, and seen just how defensive people can be when it comes to that emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just sort of curious as to the, as to the mechanism of, of how that works. <laughs> yeah. The mech the me I wish I had more, more, more answers on how it works, but Explore, I guess. Um, you know, what I could do is, I mean, I'm going to, I've got to, obviously I'm going to do more research for this when I, when I do write the book, but you know, what we're, I guess we're, where we're headed right now, there's a lot of different people who are using scalar wave frequency technology, um, you know, out there. I just heard of, um, let me get his name. Some of you may know this person. Wait a minute. Let me see. Tom Palladino. Do any of you know him? No. Well, anyway, I. It's funny. I just got a bit shoot, uh, you know, notification two days ago, and I want to start to. But he's uh, he does something called his website is called scalarlight.com, and you know you might want to check it out. I I just know of this from literally from yesterday and was planning on, on going back and, and listening to the video. But, uh, uh, you know, there's a oh. number of, I think the Tesla, uh, Kate, was it you who has the Tesla mm -hmm. device? Tell us a little yeah. bit about that because I gotta believe that it's, it might be working kind of in the same, same ways. It is supposed to also do scalar waves yeah. and basically it, it looks like a paint can, like a small 
pint pink can. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's within three feet of it is supposed to have be able to extend three feet out. Okay. So what I did is I actually I hung it from the top of my pyramid. It's hanging right at the near the top. Cool. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's I'd like to say we have all the answers, but we don't. So, you know, we want to test. We want to see, for example, devices like the the, the Tesla device. You know, maybe that would be something Kate could could look at. Is you know, does that uh, <clears throat> Does ha using it inside the pyramid have an amplification effect for, uh, you know, for your, for your uh, patients, you know? Your so other than just trial and error of trying it with and trying it without, is there any mechanical way to measure that? Is that where maybe the dowsing? Dowsing would be, you know, the closest thing that I could come yeah. to that would be uh, easy uh, muscle testing would be another. Mm -hmm. um, Curly and photography. Say that again. Curly and photography uh, takes a photo of your energy field around you yeah. uh, before and after. So that would be something that I want to get into that more and learn more about that as well. Uh, maybe be able to do it myself. Right. Um, I actually do live blood analysis. Right. Um, and it's something that I would like to teach people how to do themselves, you know, to buy a dark microscope, it's going to be probably 700 to a thousand dollars. You can actually make one very easily with a, a cheap microscope. And my daughter figured out how to do that. So that's something that I'd probably, I'll probably share with people down the road so they can do the live blood analysis testing for themselves. You see their, your blood moving in real time and, and the dramatic difference, like we shared on the JCK show. I mean, that's, that solidifies it for so many people. You see it for your own eyes. Your doctor's not just telling you that, you know, this is happening. You're actually seeing it happen and that, you feel it too. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Why, why? Even simple things like, you know, Charlie had the idea of, you know, uh, if, you, if somebody has diabetes, um, test their blood sugar beforehand and then after. So uh, even, you know, blood pressure, test it before and after. So simple things like that, that we have access to right now. Um, we don't have the Russian funding <laughs> like the government did over there. So eventually we'll have, we'll have some high tech tools, I think, down the road, Charlie. <laughs> oh, Charlie, speaking of which, have you looked into the humanitarian fund with Charlie or Charlie Ward, I think? I have... <laughs> I haven't made direct contact with Charlie Ward yet, so. Okay. I mean, uh, I don't know how that works and how that's I don't either, requested or anything, but. I, I, I'm expecting. Well, I don't. I know I don't want to expect anything, but I, I would hope that maybe we can get contact with them through uh, JC and or uh, Mark. Okay, um, I'm in um, Connecting Consciousness, which is Simon Parks's group. Yes. I just joined and we are having our first event on Saturday, next Saturday. I could, I could ask if he knows, or not, he's not going to be there, but if his coordinator has any ideas, I'll get back to you and let you know. Kate, is that a local chapter or is this mm -hmm. a nationwide? Okay. It's a Houston area or something like that. Yes. Group? Yeah. He has, he has people in, I think a hundred and some countries now. Okay. Okay. and coordinators in those areas there are actually four different coordinators in texas okay okay well so, someone actually said to me last week on the phone they said oh well we 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 heard from connecting consciousness that uh you know stargate pyramids was going to be interviewed and i said oh really i i, I don't know that but i so yeah i mean i'd well, love to i mean it's free to join any any of you can join yeah okay okay Nice. Cool. Well, yeah, anything you can find out. Yes, Dina, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but um, okay. I too was thinking about Charlie Ward's, um, uh, his grant. And I, and I do believe that in order to apply for it, one has to be um, a member, one of his members in, he, he has a membership. And I think that that's a prere prerequisite um but yeah that would be excellent 
I think yeah. uh, this would be right in that mm -hmm. <laughs> based on what I've heard him say um, there's plenty of money that they're that he's that they're allocating to these kinds of things yeah what I'm manifesting out into the universe is a, is a healing center yeah sure, sure. no that's perfect well how <laughs> Dana, how would you, or any of you, how would how would we best go about hooking up with them? Or, or I, I mean, can ask next Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do. Yeah. And if you find out anything, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd love to love to know because you know, we're I think <laughs> we're we're happy to take money from any any human. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, I just joined Connecting Consciousness as well a few weeks ago, and I'm waiting to hear back from the coordinator here in Colorado. Oh, cool. So it okay. seems like we're, a lot of us are on the same page here. Sure. You yeah. Know. yeah. Awesome. I'll have to go on and join. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can join. Just go to Simon Parks. He has an es.org. Yeah, I know Simon. Yeah, I watch yeah. Simon a lot. And he's got a thing right on okay. there. Click to join. Awesome. Um, they were slow, very slow. I actually clicked to join back in March wow. and I didn't hear anything until May 30th. Right. Wow. And even that was a, I promise we're going to get back to you. We just haven't, <laughs> they, yeah. they've grown exponentially. So it was just recently that they started doing things. And like I said, this will be the first meetup in the area. Cool. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. I have to check and see if there's uh, Yep. Sure there's something in Pennsylvania as well. I have to check. Okay. Cool. I have a very Real basic quick, question. Yeah, go ahead. Me? Yeah, sure. Me. Oh, okay. Um, does the size, I noticed you have several sizes available uh, right. for the pyramids. Does the yeah. size matter as far as the energy? <laughs> <laughs> very basic. <laughs> size does matter, but it's not as important as you might think. The enhancements, I think, far overwhelm uh, the uh, the difference in the energy fields for, within the constraints of the sizes that we offer. So, you know, we have a three foot, which is more for just your pets or, you know, right. sitting next to plants or something. But the meditation pyramids, the small, medium, and large, we could probably, if we had detective detection devices that were, you know, my significant other uses something called a Lecker antenna, uh, which is the frequency specific dousing rod for lack of a better term, but it was um, invented by a Austrian physicist named Ernst Lecker about a hundred years ago. And so she can, she can detect, you know, she can just sense when something is stronger or weaker with that device. But um, the real key is getting, um, you know uh, the 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 enhancements with the pyramid because that that overwhelms any uh, marginal difference in the in the uh, energy fields of the three sizes of meditation pyramids. Yeah, but, I usually I usually tell people that uh, a pyramid with sides is going to be more powerful than a pyramid frame. So when you add a capstone to the pyramid frame that's it's very important for the enhancement part of it um uh one of my seven and a half inch capstones is comparable to a six foot meditation frame energy wise wow yeah. so it is really it's the, about the enhancements but the bigger pyramid you get the it's going to have a little more power as well yeah so even if you got i think if you got a bigger pyramid from like uh you know a 25 foot pyramid it's going to be more powerful than a 10 foot Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. But, but, you know, we've been doing so much with the enhancements, uh, bionizing the quartz sand and putting that inside the poles alone. You know, that, I mean, it increases it exponentially. It's amazing. Uh, and then just the addition of the capstones. And then I've been bionizing the crystals that I put inside the capstones. And, you know, I want to test it. One thing I want to start doing is uh, building them with magnets in them, powerful neodymium magnets. Um, one of the most powerful healing sessions I ever had was in Italy. It was a pulsed electrical magnetic therapy session. And <clears throat> it's amazing. I mean, they can literally get rid of post-traumatic stress. 
uh, without you mentioning anything that's happening with you. Uh, They mainly chase your, um, they chase the energy out of your body with a frequency and it, you, ha- you retain the lesson from that experience, but it, it's more like you are watching a television show. You don't have the trauma attached to it anymore. Um, and so that's something, you know, I think the magnets and there's also a man in Sedona, Arizona, who does pulse electrical um, magnetic uh, magnetics connection with his pyramids, but he is, he does the Giza structure. So there's a lot of experimentation that we want to work with other pyramid healers as well. You know, somebody like, uh, high pyramids in Arizona that's been practicing this for a while, because I think the combination of the pyramids with the sound healing, the magnets, um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to cause some crazy healings. <laughs> that's right. So does the, sound healing can you just put on earbuds like this and have your phone outside of the pyramid and play the solfeggio music that's what i do when i'm doing my own meditation i I prefer that because it keeps you more in your zone Mm -hmm. um but i think to ample to add an extra amplification i would do both you know maybe put some play some in and amplify it through the pyramid as well. And that's kind of what the caduceus coil does. So if you're using your headphones and playing solfagio frequencies to yourself and playing the frequencies through the coil inside the pyramid, I mean, that's the best that you could really do. And, and Anne Marie asked a little bit earlier, I was going to answer her question about where to place the caduceus coil. You can put it underneath your chair when you're sitting inside the meditation pyramid, you can hold on to it. Uh, while you're while you're in the pyramid as well, some people hang it from the the peak, so it's hanging right down. Um, and I also I put mine right across my Apex amplifier platform, that little platform that's up there. I just lay it right across there. That seems to be the most area of focused energy inside the Stargate, so that's the area that I would recommend because that's the area of most focus. Yeah. Um, but we still need to do studies with it, and that's part of what we're going to figure out is where where it's going to be located best. I'm sure. I'm a ju- I'm a junkie. I I I run the soft edge of frequencies 24/7 in my caduceus coil in the bedroom. So and I put it up up top when I'm not in it, you know. But then I put mm-hmm. it in my lap when I'm uh, inside the pyramid. But could I, could I ask Lisa a question, please? Of course. Oh. Hi, Lisa. Um, Hi. I had an, I had an idea with the um, caduceus coil because I like hanging mine down from the apex mm-hmm. when i get my um apex platform could i drill a hole through the you middle a hole in it? <laughs> and then i, I was actually thinking that same I thing that through. yep yeah. yeah i would actually recommend that yeah i want i was that was one of the things i wanted to try as well because i've seen so many people hang them down from the center um and i was envisioning that platform going right right through it so I think that would help immensely. And I was also thinking too, of even trying a, a shorter size that might accommodate that. So you don't sure. have that extra hanging down, you know, yeah, yeah. Like Charlie said, it has to just be, uh, what is it? Oh. Nine. Yeah. yeah. That's what GW said, nine. multiples of nine. So you could, you could, yeah. you know, we could try maybe a shorter size, maybe an 18 would be perfect. And you wouldn't have that, yeah. you know, that extra hanging down there, but I've also, I've seen people who made the top four poles of their pyramid caduceus coils, you know, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you could do that right the way down. Mm-hmm. The top to the bottom. Yeah, that's what oh. I was thinking. You just do the whole thing as the caduceus coil. Let's see what that yeah. happens. <laughs> you can, know. I can, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> It Very cool. would be, but it'd be worth trying for sure. Mm-hmm. But would it have to be all four or just one of them? I think just one would probably be sufficient, but maybe four for you need it to be uniform. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I think, I think just that little bit at the apex there is probably the most powerful though. Um, going through all that work, but yeah, I don't know. We still have a lot of studying to do. You know, something Paul that comes to mind, if, you know, since you're, interested in psychology and, and then those, mm-hmm. those kinds of issues. I've, I've wondered about uh, playing, 
even affirmations or other you know techniques through the coil and i don't i you know i haven't done anything with it but i mean i was i've been thinking that that you know there may be uh, things like that that could be tested as well with the coil inside the pyramid i don't know I mm -hmm. it's just a thought yeah like somebody that wants to lose weight you know maybe not tell them the frequency that you're playing maybe see if whatever you're doing enhances that or something i don't know there's yeah but i see what you're saying yeah i mean there could be something to it if you know it, it's I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to come up with a way to test the thesis that there are you know subconscious blocks there's we had one case where a uh, paul where a reiki healer uh had a, a client who had past life trauma uh past life regression they had ha uh you know, been the subject of um, having their head cut off in a prior life, so of uh, being beheaded. So they were carrying all that, and uh, guy had been working. This healer had been working on it for several years and hadn't had any real success, but seemed to uh, disappear once. You know, all the pain seemed to disappear once he did the session with the caduceus coil. So, you know, these well, are. The I think we're going to find. I think we're going to find a lot of attachment to past lives, but also past people um, in our families, you know, picking like, for instance, that study with the mice that I told you about before. Um, the mice were raised that every time they smelled cherry blossoms, they would get electrocuted. So every time they smelled cherry blossoms, they were terrified because they knew they were going to get electrocuted. The next generation of mice never even smelled cherry blossoms yet or got electrocuted. As Soon as they introduced this cherry blossom smell, they started freaking out like they were gonna get electrocuted because that was already embedded in their DNA. They never experienced that themselves, but that alone should tell us, you know, why we suffer from so many traumas because it's, it's not something that we did in our life. It's a connection that happened in a past life or, you know, an ancestor passed down to us and, you know, breast cancer runs in my family, so you search back and find where that originated from, you can heal the whole lineage of people in your family. But that, I think adding the frequencies to it is going to be amazing because that healing that I had in Italy and combined with the pyramid energy, I mean, it's just going to enhance it. And they literally, you don't even have to talk about the trauma that you experienced. They will say, are you there in your mind? And you say yes. And they'll say, where do you feel the pain in your body? And you instantly feel the pain manifesting somewhere in your body and you point to it and they hold a probe with a frequency on it and you feel that energy just get released out the top of your head up the up your spine and it's you just detach from it and but some of the most powerful was some of the most powerful parts of that healing was when they took me uh they took me to a place in my life where i was 100 percent happy and that's how they started the session when i got to the delivery room i still wasn't 100 percent happy and I saw a hole in the wall. So she told me to go to that. And it took me to some past lives. Those past lives felt way more real than this life does, than anything in this life has ever felt to me. And it was just, it was an amazing experience. It really opened up my eyes to a lot. There's a lot more going on that we don't know about here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh does anyone else have a, a question or topic that they'd like to discuss? Charlie, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> this is Yana. Hi. Hi. <laughs> good, ev good evening, everybody. Um, I have been trying to get online with this for a while, and I didn't know how to do the Zoom, and it's taken me a while. Um, mm -hmm. I have a microphone set up, but I don't yet have a camera on my my monitor or my tower to be able to do the camera part. So, um, Charlie, I wanted to know if you could tell me what the soft, soft, soft I can't say it right. Tone, <laughs> yes, you had one on your website that had all the different tones that ran about five minutes per frequency. And I went to look for it because I lost it off my phone. Yeah. And I don't see anywhere to find that um, it's, section it's of not, the music. It, it's not there right now. Okay. Um, there, 
There are a couple of sources for this. I mean, okay. I, I'm going to try to put something on the new website. I just haven't had time to put it back up. But if, if you can give me a reference, I would appreciate it. And then that well, way I can download it. Yeah, for one thing, you can simply go to uh, YouTube and just search for solfeggio frequencies and you I did and I purchased one and it has music and noise and I just want the tone okay okay yeah. <laughs> at least have uh, go ahead an apple do you I have do. an apple iphone I do so you can go to your itunes store and uh this uh, pure solfeggio tone I use is let's see Oh, uh, it's, it's, there it is. Um, hmm. Well, carry on and I'll write it in the chat. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Lisa, Don't wait for me. <laughs> Lisa, I have a question for you. Are you wearing the tensor coils on your pendant? I am. Uh, what frequency yes, are yes, those? Yes, I am. You know, I couldn't even tell you. I oh, got dear. these from Brian Besco when I was when I was at the Dowsers convention a couple of years ago. Okay. What was your question? I wanted to know what frequency know. she was wearing. Oh, well, most of Brian's stuff, and <laughs> I, I'm acting like an expert here. I used to have a <laughs> website called tensoring.com. So, right. Uh, uh, most of the most of the uh, coils are done with a 144 hertz uh, frequency. Uh, that seems to be the one that is used the most, but there are other frequencies. 333 is one, um, but there's, I think, five or six different, um, you know, sets of, of qubit links that, that uh, relate to that. I, if you go to, well, I'll give you a, a, a place for guidance. Okay. Uh, sacredmeasures.com. Okay. That's, that's a website that Brian uh, maintains, and it has a listing of all of the qubit links and their associated frequencies. And okay. Uh, so what's on the internet is not helpful as far as trying to um, get the healing coils, which is the 144. Um, but what happens is they'll tell you what its um, frequency is, but they don't tell you how big the coil is. So I wound up thinking I was purchasing one that was a bracelet and it's big enough to put oh, over your head. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll also give you an, I, I'm not trying to advertise here, but the person, <laughs> That's fine. The person who, who I sold my business to, uh, his name is Marlon Peters. Okay. And he, he runs tensorring.com right now. And he's expanded it way beyond what I was ever doing. I was just making the rings, but he's making all the coils and so forth now. But he's got a listing of all of the various qubit sizes and so forth on his, on his website, if that would be helpful. That would be fantastic. And Lisa, um, I know you do the um, top of the pyramid with the specialty ingredients and stuff in them designing them for the person that's in the pyramid. Um, would something as simple as the quartz crystals or the shungite be fine enough for now as far as amplifying oh, the yes. pyramid? Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. And actually I would I would if you want to start out, I wouldn't even put a capstone on the peak. I would I would um, get one of the Apex amplifier platforms too. And my um, well, my perspective is that is the most important thing because that's going to be the area of most focus. So then when you do get a capstone, you don't even have to put it on the peak. You can okay. keep it zip tied and just put it on that platform. Okay. So, and then you can change it out a lot easier as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's going to enhance it if you do put another capstone on, you know. So I always tell people if you want a capstone on the peak, um, put a basic one like the Morpheus or the goddess or the sand castle that I offer mm -hmm. and then use your intuitive design one on the apex amplifier platform. Okay um, the quartz crystals I've got several of them that are about five inches long they're a very nice quartz clear. Um, I didn't know whether the crystal should be pointing upward toward the apex or down at the base as far as there being a single terminated quartz. 
Yes, I would point them up. Upward? <laughs> okay. Yep. I would point them up towards the peak. That's fantastic. And I would try, instead of like putting them all on the platform, maybe lining them up. Maybe oh. put one underneath your meditation chair. Pull okay. it onto one and line it up, you know, hold it close to you. Maybe put one on the apex amplifier above you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for your help. I'm going to see if I can get a camera hooked up to my my screen here so that I can participate. And Charlie, I love the pyramid you sent me. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad it's, to hear it. That's great. It's big enough to fit my husband. I told you I had upgraded because he just couldn't fit in there with the kitchen chair. Yeah. So now we have the uh, recliner chair that's the um, one from, oh goodness, what's the name of the store that you recommended? Oh, Ikea. Yeah, the, the Ikea. Chair. We got an Ikea chair. So now everybody's happy in the pyramid. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Kate, Kate, do you know where the Ikea is in Houston? Mm -hmm. That's about two miles from where I grew up. My, oh, really? Yeah. On, I'm talking about on Katy Freeway. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I, that may still be the only one in town. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. So that I grew up around Loop 610 and TC Jester Boulevard. Such a small know. world. Yeah. So. Anyhow, thought I'd let you know. Anyway, uh, other questions? If not, I ask Lisa a question. Go, go. Um, could you repeat what was the capstone that had the metal in it that you said people really felt uh, at yeah. expos? It's called in black and white. In black and white. Okay. So actually, any of the capstones I make with the color black in them. The black is either magnetite powder or shungite powder. Okay. Um, I make one called the twin flame that, that has magnetite powder in it because it wants, you want the magnetic effect of attracting your twin flame. Um, so uh, that in black and white one though is a very powerful one. And I was called to design it. I'm always, I'm a very colorful person and I love making all my pyramids with different colors. And I was called to make just a basic black and white one. And when I took it to the expo that weekend, almost everybody wanted that capstone. And I didn't know why. And so I asked Spirit later on why I was called to make it. And I was mainly told that people make things too difficult in this life. Everything is very simple. It's really black and white. And we need to start viewing the world more like that. So, you know, getting rid of uh, all the ties to everything and just viewing the world as is is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, one thing, my daughter is already a convert. Oh, really? <laughs> she, she thought I was crazy about all this stuff, getting the pyramid. So did my husband. Yeah. And <laughs> we, we both, she's 21. 21. We both sat under the pyramid when uh, Joanne Dunn did her solstice, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. And we did the solstice meditation together. Oh, cool. And she actually had pretty much a vision. Really? Of her, she, she described it as her astral self, is the only thing she could think of to call it, and had a complete description of it. Wow. And, wow. And, and now she doesn't think I'm crazy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's two to one now, huh? Exactly. <laughs> my, daughter is, my daughter is 25, and... It seems like a lot of kids her age are starting to catch on to this. Mm -hmm. They are, and they are, they're learning fast. So they're going to catch up really fast to us. Um, the kids though, like 21, my son's age, I think it might just be because he's a guy though. He's not that interested. Yep. <laughs> he helps me with things in my workshop, but he doesn't really want to use the stuff yet, you know, but now he's slowly seeing, um, like you playing video games all the time. You better wear that tensor ring, you know? <laughs> So he's starting to catch on. Right. But yeah. Could I, could I share a story about my son? Sure. He's, yes. he's, he's eight years old and he sits in the pyramid most days for about 10 or 15 minutes doing energy work. And he's already oh. starting to, he's starting to see energy already. Oh. Wow. Seeing lines That's awesome. of light. He's, he's feeling energy in his hands. He comes out with a big grin, all excited. <laughs> can't yeah. wait to tell me about what he's experienced. You know, it's just fantastic. I don't let him go in there for too long, but he's um, that's amazing. Really starting to 
yeah. Okay. Experience. The kids these days are really getting in tune. My niece is 16, and I gave her her first pendulum when she was like 10, and I told her how to use it, you know, yes and no, and she was over there and talking in her mind, and pretty soon she starts laughing, and I was like, what? And she goes, I asked it if my mom was crazy, and it said yes. <laughs> <laughs> But she's very intuitive as well. So you can really see it in a lot of the children. And I think that's part of the reason there's so we're seeing so much autism and stuff as well, kids on the spectrum. It's a, just a frequency change that, you know, they're getting more in tune with the frequencies around us. We're getting bombarded with so many frequencies. We don't see them, you know, especially with the 5G implementation and stuff. And mm -hmm. these kids are really sensitive to that. They're feeling it more than we are. And, you know, so they're going to help us through it, I'm sure to figure out a way to overcome all this frequency um we're drowning in it you know right and just to just to expand on that i mean i as i continue to do the do research i mean i, I i'm very well aware that the solfeggio frequencies are all based on base nine mathematics or vortex mathematics and vortex mathematics seems to be the structure of you know, intimately involved in the structure of the universe. I, my instinct is because the pyramid will amplify and clarify the dominant uh, frequency that is contained within it, that playing these solfeggio frequencies, I know are, are helpful for us. I am assuming because there's that the, the geometric, the geometry is going to be dampening or eliminating these negative frequencies that we're being exposed to. That's, that is at least the thesis that I'm working under. And so mm -hmm. you know, I think that if we start to do research, and, and again, I mean, maybe this is why I should do the seminar, but you know, you look at work from um, Samuel Milham, if any of you are familiar with him, he's in he wrote a book called Dirty Electricity, um, mm -hmm. and he, but what he, he's an epidemiologist, and he, he's tracked the electrification of the United States and correlated, it fits like a glove, with, with uh, all sorts of autoimmune diseases, chronic diseases, autistic uh, spectrum issues. Uh, it, it's all linked to it. Uh, I'm not saying that's the only factor, but it is a major contributor to all of these things. So, you know, it would be great. You know, that's why I mean, and I have a son who's got Asperger's and uh, he's, mm -hmm. yeah, he's highly functioning and he's an adult. He lives on his own, but I can't get him. I, I would love for him to allow me to give him a pyramid to research with, but he's almost 30 years old and he thinks that well, gee, Dad, are you saying that you don't love me or something because I'm the way I am? You know, you get the point. So <laughs> it's, it, I, you know, I can't, mm -hmm. I, I, so, okay, I won't go there. But, you yeah. know, with younger children, yeah, you know, I would love to get research done in that area because, I, I you know, all of these, chronic, the, Alpa Sony, if those of you saw the interview that Lisa and I did with Alpa, I mean, she didn't even have the pyramid up, but three times during the interview, she said, Oh my God, my pain's gone because I'm holding this caduceus coil in my hand. And she's got fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know, but I think there's gonna, you know, yep. I, yes. I know. Yes, all kinds of, neuro yeah, the 5G, I mean, all the frequencies are causing all kinds of neurological problems in humans, especially, uh, you know, autoimmune diseases and things like that, where they just can't pinpoint where the pain is. It's caused from all the invisible frequencies around you. Yeah. So the pyramid is going to bring, I think that knowledge alone, how the pyramid helps with uh, the frequencies is going to bring more people to us. You know, they can't wrap their minds around the spiritual aspect of it. Some people, but the ones that can't we'll see the effects for the 5G. And that's really going to bring them, I think, to us for a lot more profound healings for everybody, you know? Yeah. Lisa? Yeah. Um, what do you put around your home and your environment to protect you from the 5G and the elf waves? Um, I just got a caduceus, not a caduceus, the tensor coil to put over the electrical um, power meter that's a smart meter so that the power company uses it. 
Yeah, my old home had a smart meter, so I did the same. I put the tensor ring coil around it. Yeah. We still, though, were sleeping pretty restless. Um, our bedroom was right on the other side of that, so oh, I don't think it helped. Yeah, I don't think it helped fully. Uh, there's other things that you can do, though. You, I mean, there's uh, paint that you can get that has shungite in it that you paint on your walls. There's film that you can put on your windows, um, but it really depends on what's in the area. Um, I live in the country now, so I don't have to worry about that so much right now. Um, but, you know, I have a metal roof, so the metal roof will reflect off a lot of frequencies. Mm -hmm. You have to be mindful, though, of what's inside your house because it's like mm -hmm. a little mini microwave in there now. Whatever frequencies we bring in, it's going to bounce all over on that roof and keep hitting us time and time again instead of just escaping if it were a regular roof. Okay. So there's, yeah. I have shit pendants hanging all over the house off all the um, fan pull cords, um, trying to uh, absorb some of the um, elf waves that we're dealing with here. And um, I, I feel different now that they are up and everywhere on the house. And um, I understand that the mylar that you use for the emergency wrap for people to wrap them up if they're in cold weather, those mylar um, blankets um, actually create a barrier. So I have that against the electric box on that well, well that's a, okay i also heard that if you uh nail or tack up sandpaper and yeah. it's it's the quartz sand is quartz <laughs> so it's the quartz really i was actually thinking of using some of my bionized sand and mm -hmm. implementing it into my walls and somehow you know okay. when i redo my office <laughs> Do a painting on that wall. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just going to splatter it all over the whole wall. <laughs> but yeah, Thank a lot you. Of things, I recommend the best thing that you can do is to wear a device yourself. Okay. Um, but I put the tensor ring on my phone. I wear tensor rings. I, you know, carry shungite in my pockets and stuff too, or whenever I can. So, okay. um, yeah. And even Brian Besco, he shows you that when you put that tensor ring on the back of your phone, it's actually transforming your energy. He did an energy reading before and after, and it shows you how a phone with a tensor ring actually gives you more energy than if you didn't have the phone itself. Wow. So it's actually transforming that negative energy, the radiation from your phone, and it's turning it into beneficial energy, which is now blasting you with beneficial energy. And it's the same thing the pyramids do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're sitting in the pyramid frame when you're on your computer, you're going to be blasted with good energy instead of um, just getting that uh, radiation zapped at you all the time. Okay. <laughs> there is a physicist called um, Walt Silva, and he makes shungite and silver stickers. He makes three kinds. One is called a smart sticker that goes on uh, like a smart meter. And... Um, and then there's an S4 sticker, which can be put on the back of, of any kind of Wi-Fi or, or cell phone type device, computers, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he also uh, does a lot of this, this um, slim spurling type devices. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so he, um, he has a website called New Paradigm Tools. Okay. okay. Yeah, so those are some things. And the stickers, I don't think he's, he, de he designed the, the Shanghai stickers, hmm. but um, I th I'm not sure if he sells those, but I think Mystical Wares sells the stickers. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, and it's like, they all have, uh, Walt's website is .net, newparadigmtools.net, not .com. Okay. Yeah. And then Mystical Wares dot net or something like that yeah i did buy the stickers myself and what you said lisa about uh, it turning the energy changing the energy there is also a video of the the blood test that like you did the real oh, yeah. time yeah done with that sticker on a cell phone hmm. and it's on it's nice. on youtube actually um i'll have to check it out yeah have you heard of nancy hopkins She's, yeah i have no yeah well that's who she, he she works with walt Okay. In in creating these um, shungite products, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah so Nancy, so the is sorry. Is the one from like Boston or Massachusetts somewhere, New England? I am not sure where she lives. Yeah, I just remember a New England accent. 
I she, think I've listened to her channel. She worked. Uh, uh, she worked with uh, the NSA, I believe. Okay. Or something like that for many, many years, and then um, did remote viewing and and microbiology. And she's the one. She she zeroed in on the Russians using shungite. Yeah. Um, back in the '60s and '70s to right. block yeah. uh, radiation and. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I know. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm familiar with her. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty cool. She is. Yeah. Have you done any testing or seen any testing using like medicinal mushrooms? No, love to try. I'll volunteer. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was thinking about doing that because I carry medicinal mushroom products, and it, I would just be interested in seeing if I can figure out a way to test that somehow with the pyramid. Hmm. Yes, um, that's that's part of what we want to test too. Is you know even you know cannabis, seeing how it empowers. You know, does it increase the THC? Does it increase the healing uh, potential of it? Because what the Russians discovered was anything that's beneficial, mm -hmm. that's put inside the pyramid, and it, it enhances the potency of it by like a thousand percent. If it's wow. a toxin, then it neutralizes the toxicity of it. So I think that alone is going to, you know, just mm -hmm. putting supplements in there, putting water in there to charge. I think we're going to see some, uh, a lot of, <laughs> yeah, benefits you know, from that. Do you know how long it has to be in there? That's one thing that we're trying to get from them, <laughs> from right. over in yeah. Russia. They, they're not willing to share yeah. their stuff and we need a translator when we do communicate. So it's hard to get things from them right now, but mm -hmm. hopefully they'll share it with us soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, but I think like, you know, granite stones, I think they were putting them in there for about two weeks. So yeah, I kind of just yeah. use that, you know, a few days for, for seeds, you know, so I think a week, uh, even just a few days, you know, when I was doing my experiments um, with a live blood analysis, even just water put in there for a few days, you see amazing results. Right. You know, the longer it's in there, it seems the more powerful it gets. And that's what I want to start doing is seeing, does it lull off? Does it fall off and just, does it hit a plateau and not continue to charge? I'm assuming it does, but when, where is that plateau? Right, right. All good research. And, you know, if people are, you know, using supplements or other things like that or mushrooms, you know, that would be a great way to, to experiment is just to, you know, see what impact having um, mushrooms you know, under the pyramid for a period of time is going to be on your, on your client. So. Yeah. And even growing them, growing them inside of the pyramid, yeah. you know, how's that going to affect it compared to just charging them in the pyramid after they're already harvested. So there's a lot of different ways that we can try it. What kind well, of, all kidding, aside, what kind of mushrooms do you, do you work with Kate? Um, it's reishi mushroom, Ganoderma lucidum. Okay. Okay. That would that could apply uh, to any food, really, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. If you put that yeah. in the pyramid, and it would. Well, that's exactly yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it's doing to us. You know, when we sit inside there, filled with toxins, it's neutralizing the toxicity of our body. So when people first start using it, they might go through a bad detox. You know, they might say, "Oh, I'm having a headache." You know, well, it's detoxing you. That's why. So. I always recommend, um, you know, keeping a jar of water inside of the pyramid and just sipping on that. I think that's going to really help you acclimate to the pyramid energy a little bit more so you won't have uh, as bad toxify detoxifying effects. This, uh, to, to measure the energy, um, there is an energy chart, isn't there? How to douse with it? It's called a bovis... Uh... How would yeah yeah, but yeah how, how would you get to that yeah where how where would you get that oh you, you just can, Google it you can Google it just put a yep. bovis, bovis life scale chart and you'll find it yeah All right so it's it's called Bo bovis b b o v i s yep. all right I think the just look up the bovis scale and it should or the bovis scale chart. And uh -huh. it should come up. There might be several of them, but just choose which one you're pulled to. Uh huh. Well, I won't Google it. I'll uh, duck duck it. Okay. <laughs> duck duck go in. 
I assume and they're spying on all of us anyway. So there's, there's yes. like, he knows well, in my office right now. They're probably a little government spy, so. <laughs> I, I've never done any dowsing. Can you use anything as a pendulum? Oh gosh, yes. Yes, I used to use, uh, I'd take a piece of my hair and tie it to a paper clip and use it. Anything oh. that has a free swing. It okay. has a little bit of weight to the bottom. Um, you can use a necklace. You know, I had a cross necklace I would do it with before. So whatever you're pulled to, to, pulled to use. Um, but you get more in tune with the pendulum if you um, put it in your pocket. It connects more to your energy. You know, put mm -hmm. it in your pocket during the day. Um, put it under your pillow at night. Don't let other people touch it just mm -hmm. because you, you want it to tune into your frequency. And you try, when you start out, you try with questions that you already know the answers to. That's going to teach you to trust it a little, you know, you're trusting yourself is what you're mm -hmm. doing. You're trusting your intuition and it's just helping guide you there. So ask questions like, are my eyes blue and see what the answer is. And when you start feeling that feeling, when the, you're getting the correct answer, that's what's going to help tune you into all the answers for the pendulum. Thank you. Do you tell the pendulum, mm -hmm. like, do you, do you decide yourself what a no and a yes is? How do you know what a no or a yes is and how it moves? Yeah. You, also you can do it. You can do it to, you can do it either way. You can say, show me a yes, show okay. me a no and see which way it swings. Or what I like to do is, you know, I affiliate this up and down with the yes and no. So right. I, I manipulate, I manually move it back and forth and I say this is a yes this is a yes this is a yes and then I do it the other way and say this is a no this is a no this is a no okay. and that's what I that's it knows what I'm expecting from it so that's how mine is I think it works better that way but you can do it either way okay thank you you're welcome another thing too real quick you know about the pendulum and I just learned this from um I can't remember her last name Alicia she's an excellent um Dowser from Canada. Oh, okay. and she told me. Do you know who I'm talking about, Charlie? Alicia. Yeah, I do. She used to sell uh, a great book on uh, on the Lecker antenna. I know exactly who you're talking about. I can't. Yeah. Remember. So she she was from Poland, and they taught her some stuff over there that I've never heard over here. But she said if you're dousing for somebody else, to actually, um, as you're thinking of the person, walk your finger down the chain. And the pendulum will start reacting when you get to the correct position on the, the chain, which is their frequency. So you're going to hold it at different positions on the chain according to who you're communicating for. You know, yourself, if you're doing something for yourself, you're going to hold it in a certain position. But the main thing is, is you hold the chain or walk your finger down it until it starts reacting. And that's when you know that's the spot you have to hold for that person or for you. To ask questions you'll get more immediate you'll get answers i think either way but you'll get more immediate answers when it's like turning uh the radio dial to the correct frequency does the chain have to be a particular material you can have a chain you can have like i said you can have a piece of hair you, it doesn't i don't think it really matters as long as you're using it just with the correct intention you know just mm -hmm. to get answers and yeah I've, I've used all different kinds. I know some people say wooden ones are better or metal ones are better, but I've had good experiences with all of them. Some people say you shouldn't put crystals in them, but I make the little Russian pyramid pendulums with crystals in them. I have them, I'm, my newest one that's coming out will have Ormus in the center of it and it's a super conductor of energy. So it's gonna be super programmable. You're gonna get uh, really immediate results when you use that. Cool. Cool. Lisa? Have you made the um, power rod, um, dowsing rods that are made out of a coat hanger? You take the metal rods and cut them l shape and the short side you hold your handle in it with a straw so that you're not affecting the dowsing rod? So I made a jacked up version of that and I, I plan to test it more. It um, works really good. Um, I had two, yes, I had two large plastic uh, holders. Yeah. And then I had the, the metal coat hangers, but I also shoved quartz crystals up inside of the pipe and put a powerful neodymium magnet in there as well. They were like instantly reactive before I even asked the question in my mind, they were pointing in the direction or crossing yes or no. 
I doused yeah, the powerful. house before we moved in and I was able to find hot spots on the floor in the house that I've got furniture setting so nobody walks through the spots in the house that have the uh, energy in it that's not good. Um, when I was dowsing, Noah, um, they told me that I should ask permission before I douse whether or not I should be asking those questions. And if you get a yes, then continue with, can I actually get an answer for this question? And the last one is, should I ask that question uh, before starting the dowsing? Yeah, I don't do that. I just, if it doesn't move, that to me means I don't, I'm not supposed to know the answer. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, a lot of people do that too. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you're getting there, you're asking your higher self. Correct. To, yeah. So, um, but if it's, if you're not supposed to, to know something, then it won't move. Or if, yeah. You know, yeah. And if you're attached to the answer too much, it's not going to give you the correct answer either. If you're hoping that the answer is a certain thing, <laughs> that's going to affect the outcome of it as well. So you really need to learn how to just center yourself and clear your mind before you start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Connect, okay. Disconnect from the emotion of it, I would say. Cool. And that was our class in dowsing. <laughs> <laughs> Are we all questioned out for tonight? I guess so, huh? All right. Well, again, uh, please uh, get back to Allie. Uh, if you're interested in, in, in helping some of the people that, you know, have, have, have shown interest in, in getting some pyramid healing. And then also, I guess the last question, we're thinking of, you know, would, would you all be interested in keeping this we had another group this morning, but you know, having some sort of a periodic uh, meetup uh, to uh, you know, to, just to stay abreast of what people might be doing or answering questions, you know, whatever. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, and also if you're interested in getting, uh, you know, communicating with each other, uh, would, if you're interested in being on an email list, well, you know, if you give give tell. Um, Allie, that you'd be interested in doing that, we'll compile an email list so people can stay in touch with each other as well. That would be great. Yeah. So, so if you want to do that, go ahead and, and just, you know, send, send Allie an email on all these topics and she unfortunately will have to figure out how to, uh, <laughs> how to compile all that. Allie needs to send out a questionnaire no with the 14 questions we're supposed to answer. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. Well, maybe that's what it'll be. I don't know. So, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, I guess if we're, I thank you all for uh, showing up. And I know uh, for you, Anne Marie, it's pretty late. So uh, probably time for you to get some sleep. So two o'clock. I'm just waking up now again. again. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So. I just want to say stick with us guys we're going to get this thing more structured this is just the beginning we will have more details and stuff as we do the research and as you guys continue to share it but we will have more you know meditations classes things like that going on as well oh thank you mm -hmm. all right thank, thank you all you. very much and uh we'll be uh we'll be back in touch uh shortly uh with with news as it occurs all right you all thank have you. a great evening and thank you for uh, attending tonight. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, all. Bye.